right, let's call the order of the council work session April 29th, 6 p.m. Town Hall Complex. Uh, call the order. Mr. Charles, if you would do our invitation, please. Yes, sir. If you all would just bow for a moment with us, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now, Lord God, thanking you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, for bringing us through another day's journey, God, for watching over us last night, <clears throat> touching us with the finger of love this morning, and leading and guiding us down the path of righteousness all day long, God, and we give you the glory. Now, Lord, we ask that you come into our midst, bless this council body, Lord, bless administration and all of the citizens of this great community that you have put together, that we might be the best servants that we can possibly be, and all to, to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Stand for the pledge, please. Come on in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Motion by Mr. Prowse to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Susan. Um, any discussion? Um, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Would you like to abstain, Mr. Kane? No, that's just kind of silly. Why don't you just ask for unanimous consent? I'm in a my hand is up. Thank you. The uh, agenda has been approved unanimously. Thank yeah. you. The copy of the agenda. Actually, this is on my copy. I'll print it out. Of the agenda? Or the agenda? Agenda. Yeah. Um, the next I'll copy, but I'll let it down. Do we make any copies? It's really uh, fairly short. Um, we print some of them. There's one item on it. Mr. Olin is on the way, so we will take a quick recess. People can grab some food um, while he's making it over. Okay. All right, we'll call this back to order. Uh, moving on to item five, discussion topics A, discussion of fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Uh, Mr. Luckadoo, town manager. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for coming out and being here, hopefully, over the past couple weeks. Um, you've had an opportunity to go through this and, and evaluate each of the budgets. Um, as I stated in the email, there are many things in this that they, the expenses are what they are, the revenues are what they are, um, and there's not much we can do with those. There are some things that, that can be flexed a little bit, but we've, we've worked through with department heads and administration sitting down going through budgets. and and uh, evaluating our needs for this coming year. And we have put in this budget at this point what we feel is a, is a good projected budget for this year. Does that include capital? What's that? I'll, I'm gonna highlight each budget in a couple minutes and I'll talk about what's included and what's not. No, I was talking about your discussion as to what's expected. Well, so far, it's just been department heads and administration, and that's why we're at council tonight to, to discuss the budget with council. I mean, council is a part of the budget process. Right. Was that council included <coughs> in putting these numbers together? Not at this point. That's what we're here to discuss tonight. If there's any changes that need to occur with the budget and <coughs> based on your review and evaluation. One of the questions. Have you anyone heard from Hall? Um, she had texted me and stated she was going to be unable to make it tonight. So, Ted, we have a lot of new council members. Mm -hmm. And so, previously, there has been a misconception here about how the budget <laughs> is formulated. It's our job 
to set the budget. And when you set the budget, um, the changes that need to be, that should be made or that we want to be made is council's prerogative. And once you, when, when people say um, council changed this or council changed that in the budget, and we sit back and like, no, we didn't do that. I didn't agree to that. Once you vote for the budget in the two readings, any changes in the, in that budget, you voted for, you made. So as we go through this, we need to make the changes. What staff does is fine, but council, this is council's opportunity to dictate the budget positions and things like that so that we don't get into this thing about we can't micromanage Teddy. Well, I'm going to thank you for your input, and and now I'm going to turn it over to Teddy because this is really his portion of, of the work. So thank you very much. I mean, that's fine, but, you know. Thank you very much for that. Teddy, but, please. Um, Listen, you start, I want to start the presentation. First. Okay, but listen. Uh, How man, long you, do you, you want to be do, here, Mr. You Kane? Do, you do that a Mr. lot Kane? because you have something Mr. else Kane? to do. No, but that's I don't important. have anything else to do. Mr. Kane, I want to, I want to work on this budget, Mr. Kane. And, okay. and this okay. is okay. part okay. of the agenda, ahead, and we're ahead. going to continue on the agenda. Thank you very go much ahead. for your input. Thank you. Did you know that, what I just said? Sir? Did you know what I just said? Did you know that information? No. Yes, I did. Sir, I, sir, don't question me. Let's continue with the agenda. You didn't know that. And so uh, I don't try to belittle what I said. Teddy, please continue with the agenda. Yeah. So tonight, here, you didn't know that. the outline that I've established for tonight is for us to work through this is that we will, um, I'm going to do a budget summary highlight of the overall budget. Then we're going to move into highlights of the Victims Assistance Fund and that budget. And from there, we're going to Excuse me. We're in recess until a call to the mayor. Okay. We need to do this. I got like a little kid. We need a boat to go and reset. We certainly do, so let's exactly. carry on. If you, you just can't storm out and do it correct. You need a boat to go and reset. So please continue, sir. Because we have not had a boat to reset. Someone want to let him know that we're not in reset. Mayor Pro? Yes, Lord Pro, tell you are in charge of it. I don't think we need a boat to reset. We have to have a boat to reset. We got the motion to vote to do that. Motion second. We do have a motion. Okay, no, well, let's we go. Don't. We, well, I just said that he was agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. So let's just go on with the meeting until he comes. Okay, so down. Pro Tem gets to go okay, on. So go ahead, so we can go on with the meeting, so we can get out of here. Exactly. All right. Well, continue, man. All right. So budget summary highlights of the overall budget. Um, we're going to move into the Victims Assistance Fund and that budget. We're going to talk about the highlights of the General Fund. Uh, those departmental budgets and capital requests, then in the H tax and uh, finish up with the utility fund. So a quick look. So a quick look at the overall budget summary. This is for each, for all the funds of the town. Uh, looking at fiscal year 1920, uh, we're looking between all the funds at about. Seven million eight hundred and fifty-three thousand three hundred seventy-six dollars. At this time, that's what we have as projected revenue and therefore expenses. Um, that is an increase from last year's 18-19 budget and 17-18 budget. You said that that is the revenue projected revenue so, and the. If, in, in having a balanced okay, so budget, yeah, okay. yeah. If you're rev once you set the revenues, you're gonna you're gonna match your expenses. Right, yeah. So we know that we'll at least have the seven million eight hundred fifty three thousand three hundred seventy six. <coughs> Moving in, uh, the victims assistance fund is one of the. Uh, it is what I would say the easier fund from a budget standpoint. Now there were some things that we had to to look at this year in this budget. Um, quick. A little bit of information on the victim's assistance budget. A couple of years ago, there was a... Uh, yes, sir. Do you want me to vote to go to recess by calling the mayor? Call the mayor. You can talk to the mayor. The mayor can take it out. You need to read the book sometime, man. No. Read, read the rules. No. That's great. Go back in. Oh, Lynn. Oh, Is that correct? No, but no. let's go on. Let's, let's get on with the big challenge. Um, the big. Let's check. 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 Let's check.
So over the past couple years, we have been experiencing some uh, less revenue coming in to the Victims Assistance Fund. Um, in talking with Chief about this, what's happened is two, a couple years ago, there was a Supreme Court judge that, that ruled that had a ruling come down to the judges in the state um, that has had one part of an impact on the amount of money that we've been bringing in. Um, but as well, I know that our judges have been, been offering people more scheduled time payments to, to pay their court fines. <coughs> and those scheduled time payments have cut down on the amount of revenue that we've had coming in. Um, between those two things we have seen now we have been in discussion with our town judges with our clerk of court um, chief oswald myself and there are multiple things that we feel like we can do to try and get this revenue back up um in working with the state i believe it was at 141 chief am i correct in that that there's some potential revenue there to get from the state that we've previously not been getting we're looking into that um, as well, we are talking with our judges with regards to this ruling from the Supreme Court. Um, we think there's some changes that could possibly be made there that we're talking with them about. And then we've also started using the Municipal Association set off debt program for, for the court, which we previously did not do. Um, that will allow us to capture some revenue each year through the set off so debt program. When you say that you're making changes to that, you mean that you're forcing people who get a ticket or have Come, come into contact with my court to pay more? No. Or to pay, to, to not have um, payment plans? No, that, so what, what's happened just in a nutshell real quick is, it used to be that if someone came to court and they were given a scheduled time payment mm -hmm. and they couldn't, they stopped making their payments. Right. A bench warrant could be issued for them. <coughs> um, well, the Supreme Court judge came down and said you can no longer do that. Right. What you, you have, have to do now is do a rule to show cause. They have to come back to court, and at that point, the judge can either sentence them to jail, right. or they could pay their fine in full, or they could extend the scheduled time payment even further. And I know that w what's been occurring a little bit more is that they extend that scheduled time payment, and so that's just preventing some of the revenue from coming in. So what's the change? To, you said you talked to the judge about it. So no, we're, we're talking with them, and there's some there's some things that we're going to discuss about trying to. No, what are those things? I said we're going to discuss it. We, right, but what are you going to discuss? I'm trying to get that. What, what are we're going to talk about the rule to show calls right now, and what are we primarily doing? Extending the payments, right. or are we ordering them? Our issue issuing a bench warrant for them to go to jail and trying to get more money brought in on if they've not paid the first time trying to circle back and if they got to come back a second time trying to capture more of the money at that point versus extending scheduled time payments which they've not made before right that's just those are a few things that we're looking at that we feel like we can get if they couldn't afford to up. pay in a lot of period of time they're not going to be able to pay if you don't extend the time, then what's going to happen is you're going to wind up sending them to jail, which is going to cost us more money to house them down the long run. Well, they would be at Lexington County, and at, at oh, this that point, that does numbers on the budget. So, these questions? What's that? Does this affect the numbers on the budget? No, it affects people. No, I understand that. Okay, I mean, well, that's, just, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about, the people. All we have, okay. Are we, and that's a part of the budget. Ted, that's I, have, the budget. I have a question on... Now, can you can you tell us who you're going to talk to and, and go through that one more time? How are we so going to increase our actual funds coming in? We're going to okay. talk with our town judges, Chief and I and the Clerk of Court. Um, we're going to sit down. We've already had just some minor discussions, not in detail. Um, it, it's really about knowing exactly what that judge's order says and and our understanding of it is that if they don't pay their scheduled time payment the next step is to issue the rule to show cause which they're supposed to come back to court if they don't show up to court my understanding is is that we haven't been issuing bench warrants at that point but rather we've just not really been doing 
any So it sounds like we probably need to have a better procedure in place. Uh, procedurally, that's what we're wanting to talk with the judges about is having how more of a standard judges? procedure. How many time judges do we have? Two. We have um, Judge Cook, who is the primary judge of the town, and then we have uh, Judge Morgan, who is the local magistrate but is contracted to be a secondary judge for the town. Okay. Because so those are the two people we're, that that um, staff is going to talk to and to see and also if our there's a procedure in place, and secondarily how we can either change that procedure if we think it's too strict or stick with that procedure to get more income. Right. And we certainly can't revenue. dictate to the judges, but we would like to come up with a standard and, and a decision to try and treat things more consistently. Um, we feel like that could help with stabilizing this budget for the future. And Chief, and we're, not you go ahead. we're not receiving any money it's nothing like it used to be. We're we're receiving about half of what we were. But you're showing none, actual. What's that? You're showing weak assistance, zero. Um, that's the revenue. Right. Oh no no no, that's on the expense. Um, that's. It comes in. That is an accounting pass-through line item. That, that, that Dooley and Company had us establish. It, it comes in, reflects for most of the month, and then at the end of the month it clears out, shows us the revenue going into the business assistance fund. Okay. okay. A um, couple things we did do um, is we did, in talking with Chief Oswald, we did remove the training and travel and the office supply budget budgeted line items within the victim's assistance um, the office supplies was really small and really wasn't used on much of an annual basis because she works at the P PD and there's generally plenty of supplies within the PD so we we removed that portion of it um, as well as the training and travel um, in an attempt just to bring the budget down as much as possible uh, chief said that her training and travel for her victim's assistance, he would just find from the PD training and travel. Um, Can you say her? Who are you referring uh, to? B.J. Morris, who serves as our victim's assistant. What's the money used for? The bulk of it. The bulk of her salary. Pretty much at this point, the victim's assistance is set up to, to pay her salary based on the revenue and expenses. Nothing else. Um, at this at this point, we have the budget She's set. She's already retired, right? Well, she retired. She was able to come back under the old retirement plan. So she's Terry. Well, it's not Terry. the Terry program. Um, she was just retired. Terry put a five-year max on it. She was just retired, goes out for 30 days, and then retired by the town. So, uh, we've set the revenue at 10,150 in hopes that uh, some of this uh, standardization and, and discussions will increase the amount of money coming in this year and the set off debt uh, program will help to bring some more in and through those, we felt like we would set it there for this budget. <coughs> and now how will this increase revenue? What's that? Well, set off debt is going to help capture through tax the set off debt program goes through the tax I system. I mean, proposed changes that you say you're going to talk about. Well, hopefully that it will, if, if, if scheduled time payments, and we're very supportive of scheduled time payments being put in place. And, and Chief, if at any point you feel like you can weigh in and <coughs> provide anything, please do. Help, help me understand. Right. So if a person, say, gets a $1,000 fine, they don't have a $1,000. So now we give them a payment plan. Right. Right. So if we take away the payment plan, what would be the alternative? Well, they would get the payment plan, but if they fail to pay as what was agreed to with the judge. Right. Initially. At, back in the day, we would issue a bench warrant for their arrest. What the judge came back and said is you can't do that anymore. Right. Now you have to issue a rule to show cause which they have to come back to court as to why they're not making the payments. Right. As to why they, right, and they got to talk with the judge about that. And the judge has the option to either, A, enforce the jail time at that point, 
B, make them pay in full at that time, or C, reissue another scheduled time payment. Um, so you're going to leave those three options in place? Those three options are there. It's just what's hurting now is if they don't show back up to court, technically our understanding is you have the ability at that point to issue a bench warrant. But I don't think the I don't think the bench warrants have been issued quite as much, and therefore it just goes to the set off debt program, and then you have to wait an entire year until you can submit it for tax deduction during tax. Well, it's not trying to balance budget on back of people. It's just that they can't pay, man. If they can't pay, and now would you? What I hear you saying is they can't pay, so you issue a rule show cause. They come back before the court, and they still can't pay. What the judge is doing is saying, okay, I understand your situation. I'm going to extend you another three months to come up with the money and pay. Right? And right. what you're saying is... And I'm not saying that that's a bad option. That's not what I'm saying. You, why would you... What, what I'm saying is a lot of the people are not showing back up to court. Because we haven't issued the rule to show cause yet. No, the issue... The rule to show cause is issued. They're right. given their court date, and they're not showing up. And then at that point, rather than issuing a bench warrant, that a lot of them are just being pushed to set off debt. Well, set off debt doesn't come around but once a year to turn that in. Okay. And and that. So which was your? Where so you want to lock them up, basically? No, that. That's yeah. Because if you issue no, a bench warrant, they're gonna be locked if, up. If you issue a bench warrant, it at least allows the opportunity if if they do are found somewhere else. For our department to get them, they go back before the judge. Right, you lock it's, them up. Isn't there attention? But the way you get to the, the way you get to go back before the judge is that you get locked up. Well, you would get locked up right. if you have a bench warrant and you encounter law okay. enforcement. Okay. okay. Looking at the weeds on the budget item, that's not we're out of the budget. Well, we're not really because what we we're, we're what I'm hearing him say procedures related to court. Not well, I'm just because because he's trying to change those procedures. No, he's but yeah, he's trying to change those procedures. Not part of the budget process. Yeah, he's trying to change his procedures so that he can increase the revenue in the budget. That's what he's saying. That's basically what he's saying. But we can move on. I'm just saying, as long as we understand he's what he's saying. He's saying the revenue has reduced because of the of the Right, and he's trying to increase revenue. I, I, I'm not hearing that. Aren't you trying to increase your revenue? No, I'm, I'm trying to get it back to where it was. Well, that's he's trying them. to be fair. I'm, if I'm someone to, gets I, a ticket and we have a procedure, everyone's treated the exact same right. way. Right. Well, that's fine. And I'm just so saying. I I'm, think if we see that procedure, we. Yeah, I'm just saying, but I'm, I'm not questioning the procedure. I'm just trying to get everybody to understand that. We're, you know, we're having to reduce to, revenue at this point. I'm not trying to increase revenue for the victim assistance fund. I'm, I'm really trying to not continue to lose more and more, which is ultimately okay. the next thing that's affected is, is the salary of our victim's assistance if we okay. can't afford that. Trying to stop the bleeding. And trying to stop the bleeding. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's fine. Well, so, the same revenue set at 10150 and the projected expenses are just for our victim's assistance salary at 10150 and the employer contributions, and that's the victim's assistance fund. <coughs> All right. If there's nothing else about that, we can move into the general fund. We are going to start with the general fund uh, budget summary. Um, our projected revenue for the general fund has been set at $4,149,926. Um, you can see each, and we will go through each of highlights of each of these budgets. Um, as we go through this. At this point right now, we have projected expenses of $4,095,070 with $54,856 remaining to balance the budget. And we will discuss um, some options and things in just a little bit for that $54,856. What increases that <coughs> uh, last year? As far as the revenue, yes. the revenue is actually a reduction um, at this point from last year, and the majority of that reduction is based on our reimbursement for the new E911 dispatch system. Um, if you recall, that was, I believe it was $121,000, and I'm doing that off the top of my head, in the general fund revenue budget, E911 revenue. 
I believe it's $121,000 reduced out of that, but that's because we had to purchase the new dispatch system, and we had that reimbursement of 80% coming from the state. So this year we won't have the dispatch system, so that revenue won't be coming in. But we also won't have the expenses for the new dispatch system. So the revenue actually shows as a reduction, but it's primarily tied to the 911 system, dispatch system from this past year, current year. Does that make sense? Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, is this the appropriate time to ask about the revenue, or would you like to talk about the revenue as we go through each budget? No, once we get, I'm about to highlight the revenue, and then if we have some particular questions about the revenue, we can. He's not going through the line item. He's not going to go through the line item. He's just going to overview. I'm not going line item by line item, but if the member has a question about a line item, I'll do my best to answer that. Due to new development in residential and commercial properties and permits and additions and things, some real property value, we've got extra real property taxes that have come in. You'll see an increase in the real property tax line item for this year, and that's based on what we've received. Also, due to the 15% SE&G rate reduction, we did have to lower the franchise fee revenue down. If you weren't aware, SE&G did a 15% rate reduction, or Dominion has done that as a part of the acquisition and merger. That's ultimately going to lower our franchise fee revenue down. Because that's less money they're going to be bringing in by reducing the rates. And we're 5% of the revenue that they bring in. We're 5%. Who set the 5%? What's that? Who set the 5%? The town did. We have a 5% franchise on SE&G and MidCarolina. And Time Warner. You can't go to 10%? And then we'll get to the town. We just redid our franchise agreement a couple meetings ago. They just broke it. They breached it. They breached it. They changed their rate. There's nobody in the state at 10%. The highest rate is 5%. They reduced their rate 15%, which really kind of violates our agreement with them. So we have a right to renegotiate. But that's fine. We can keep going. I'm not going down that hill. They pretty much set the rate. Well, not for the franchise fee. We set the franchise fee. Approximately, will we be losing any money because of these little energy-saving things that are on houses? Is that affecting us in any way? Well, I mean, as people. Yeah, solar panels can lead to less electrical costs for homeowners. Your hot water, tankless hot water heaters, LED lighting. There's many things that people are doing in their homes that conserve energy and lower their bill. As their bill is lower, that's less they pay, which is less franchise fee that comes in as well. So you've got a number of things that affect it. A mild winter can greatly affect what you bring in in franchise fees, energy savings, and obviously rate reductions by the electrical company can affect it. But on the bright side, as new homes are built or new commercial buildings are built and they tie on to SE&G Electrical, that's added franchise fees that can be added. So there's a balancing act. We did have to reduce, and again, this kind of goes back to the discussion we just had in victim's assistance. We had to reduce $38,000 from the revenue for state fines, fines and forfeitures that's coming in, and it all goes back to what we just discussed. We were able to add new revenue based on the bank interest into the budget this year that we previously were unable to budget. And it was $121,000, Mr. Charles, that we had to reduce from the revenue in the general fund for this year because that was all tied to the new dispatch system for this past year, which will not be included in the current budget or the fiscal year 1920 budget. Going forward, we're going to have to reduce that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll come down and greet counsel and then proceed to our next case.
garbage, garbage revenue, as we're aware, they, they're putting their CPI increase in place. So that's obviously going to affect the garbage revenue as well as the garbage expense that's within the street department. And we'll talk about that here shortly. The, the garbage revenue is more or less a pass-through. It is. It is. Have we broken out with this um, pass-through revenue versus, you know, non-pass-through So we understand. We don't really control that. Council. Right. Right. The town. Right. We, so, we collect yeah. all the money for advanced disposal and cut them one check every month. Right. Do we have that? Can we break that up of revenue so we know what's passed through and what's not? But it's still a revenue coming in. Yeah, it's it's passed through or not. But it still, it still comes in and goes out. It's, right. a, it's a revenue. And we reflect the revenue line item and an expense line item. Now, the expense line item includes a couple other things, and, and it includes the payment we make to Lexington County for the Saluda County properties that, that are being disposed of at Lexington County landfill, as well as a uh, couple dumpsters we have for the town that we pay for um, at the water plant, places like that. We've got a couple dumpsters and we pay for it. And then our main, uh, our multiple big dumpsters we have it out at uh, our maintenance facility that when we do have to pick up a bulk item has been dumped in a creek, we put it in and there's a disposal cost. So, I mean, I'd just like to, to know, I would personally just like to know what the pass through um, revenues are because uh, grants are also part of our pass through. I, I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm just not understanding what exactly. Can, I'm not able, if, can, may Go I speak ahead. on that? Um, on the revenue under garbage fees, mm -hmm. the 1819 actual was 232917 but as of as a 411 yeah okay and so that's probably one of my questions we have projected 330,000 right. which is about a hundred thousand dollar difference is well, that because well we still have a couple months left that was as of april 11th we still have may and june that i was just giving you where it stood as of april 11th that line mm -hmm. item but that that number will be changing okay between now and the end of the fiscal budget year. <laughs> so you okay. think, so is it running about 50000 a month? Yeah, it's, Judy, I know you, you cut the check. We're bringing, it's around 50, 50 something thousand dollars a month. No, it's 20 something, 20, yeah. it's 20 something okay. thousand so dollars a month. So we probably, and the, the reason I'm questioning is before we can budget expenses, we have to know that our revenue projections mm -hmm. are correct. Right. And I think, and I will. I have just a, a list that I have not had time to go over with you that, that I'll share. Well, and what this, we, this shows that we're, to me anyway, that we're projecting about a hundred thousand more on garbage fees than what we actually spent. With still having two months, so mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking that some of our revenues may be inflated, so we have to be cautious about them spending based on that revenue. Well, there's a couple things to take into account, and, and again, I don't have the general mm -hmm. ledger right in front of me. One, that takes into account <laughs> the CPI increase for advanced disposal. So it it just just in my head. It's the kind of point I was trying to make, but you made it a lot better than I was making. So the factors that are taken into account, it, it, we look, I've, I've got a, a revenue spreadsheet that month by month I put exactly what we're bringing that's in what, we can, what we're what sending out and, and and what i do is click and drag and it i take the average over nine months of what we're doing per month and i do that times 12. well we all well, well we see this but if we got into every every revenue and expense that i track we, we would be here for days i don't want to i don't want to go discuss it but i certainly would like to see it that's what i'm saying uh, and the all right so would, would it be acceptable to you and the council if some of these questions that I've gone line mm -hmm. by line right. that that I think that the revenue might be inflated or the revenue might be low, would it be all right if I get this to Ted and he can get back to us with the answers on sure. this? Sure. How about you submit it for the record and we all get a copy of it? This is just based on my own personal going through the budget. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying we all need to... 
see it if you want to. I mean, that's up to you, but okay. that's what we, we would normally do. We, we submit it to GD as part of the record. So the other thing it. that's taken into account is the CPI increase. So the rates are obvi obviously going well, up. So you, you, you have to look at... You have to look at, because our average monthly number of customers fluctuates up, it fluctuates down. So <coughs> the way that I projected is I take, uh, I, I'm looking at what did we do for July, August, mm -hmm. September, October, and I take the average of all of those months and I do that average times 12. But then taking the CPI increase into account, you have to add some additional revenue onto that because you're going to be bringing in more due to the higher rate. I just like to see the raw numbers, personally. Right. <coughs> she'll, she'll submit them, and I'll, I'll do my best to get all them answered in a timely fashion. Do you need to share them with us? Please. Sure. Okay. Is that all right, Richard? Sure. Okay. Looking at general fund, now these are... What I'm going to highlight now is expenses that aren't necessarily tied to one particular budget but they're kind of across the board for the general fund uh, each general fund bu departmental budget accounts for a half a percent increase in employer medical contributions that took effect January 1st 2019 we had to budget for that uh, our workers compensation rates for the most part across the board were reduced down this year which is a great thing we did have um, a couple positions that the rates increased and and that's just based on the national standard that they they set the rates and the risk for the job um, those were those were accounted into the workers comp line items for this year um, all the budgets and positions are have the one percent increase in south carolina retirement system employer contribution for this year included this current draft budget that you have currently does not have a staff cost of living built into it, but administration has included the total cost to do a 2% employee cost of living raise this year that, that we will talk about in just a little bit. Uh, each department budget uh, has seen, just as we're gonna have less revenue coming in because of electricity, all of our it's been electricity expense line items for our departments are also going to be reducing so there is a little bit of return on that standpoint um, and no requested capital at this point has been included except you will see capital reflected in the fire department's budget um, has been included and we will discuss capital requests and uh, additional <coughs> requests by departments in just a little bit what I mean by the fire department is their capital expense line item there are things fire hose bunker gear things that we always buy on an annual basis um, that are included that there's no new additional capital in the fire department that's been added at this point looking at just got a pie chart here to kind of put it in perspective um, the makeup of the general fund expenses You'll see that the police department is 48% of the budget uh, with... Is that a reduction? Actually, I believe it has reduced down in percentage. I think it was up closer to 50, mm -hmm. 49 or 50, 51 um, for the past couple of years. Um, fire and administration make up both 13 with the non-departmental at 7. Public works at 17% uh, before fire and administration. So moving into council budget, current budget amount for the council budget is $52,200. Um, the current bu draft budget that council has does not reflect compensation at this point, but the option, there is an option for council compensation that has been given to you guys um, in the additional request section uh, that was sent out for council to consider. It was an option. For you guys to consider you certainly don't have to take that option there can be other options but we will discuss that here in just a little bit further this isn't this is an election year 
So this year we needed to to uh, budget for some election expenses as we have an election this November. <coughs> so you would see that uh, those those projected expenses were added into the budget. Yeah, Keep what, what expenses do you have since the county is conducting? We have to pay the county to mm -hmm. conduct our, our elections for us. Uh, generally, it's anywhere from twenty-five hundred to three thousand oh, dollars. Like it depends on if there's runoffs and and special elections or just standard elections. There's there's different things that can influence that, but um, it generally ranges between twenty-five hundred and three thousand dollars on an election. Do you know what it was costing us to uh, uh, do our own election? No, sir, I do not. Since I've been here. Uh, the county's done it. I'm not real sure. Uh, previously, it cost the town more than the county was doing. Because we did, the town did not have the headed of running the election. And, and I know there's a lot that goes into <laughs> to the election process, and that was part of the decision to move it to Lexington County, was there was quite a bit of staff time put into that in organizing that. Um, one thing to keep in mind, we just talked about auditing services last meeting. Um, the new rate will not be in effect for this budget. We still have to pay the, the previous rate because Dooley and Company will be doing the fiscal year 2019, 2018-2019 budget, the one we're in now, and that's going to be at the same rate. It'll be next year's fiscal budget that we will be able to bring that price down to the new Price that was given. So um, now, by law, oh, no, we have to do. So we do our um, attorney, judge, and the auditing. That, um, that, don't they come on the council for every like every every election year? Yeah. We have to do that every two years. Yeah. Um, so how does that work with the contract? Because we have a long-term contract with. Um, if you just it's the date of the contract, the length of the contract is one. It's with every two years now. Yeah. Did, did, did no, you know I that? think the only thing that I think what Rhea points is is the from what we've done previous years, we've not done auditing previous years. Oh, I think all the councils um, employees, so to speak, or charges should have to be uh, reappointed every two years. I don't believe your indigent defense and your auditing services fall within okay, that. Uh, your town that. attorney, uh, the Judge, the judge, the judge, and the clerk reports. Okay. No, the, the clerk reports to to the manager. She's a uh, regular uh, employee, but I think the, uh, the auditor might fall into that that arena. We have to see. It might be um, professional services. I don't know, but I thought the auditor really kind of reported to council was a council appointment, which means that every two years. <laughs> So it's not, it's not a council years. appointment, it's a contract that's approved by council. Right, but it can change every two years. The council can change every two years. So I'm just saying that we, we wear that as we go forward further. With the extended contract, I think we contract with them for four years, right? How many years right. are you with? We're putting together a four year contract. Okay, but when, as you do that, you have to let them know that this council cannot bind a future council. You understand what I'm saying? So that their contract needs to be two years. Because if, if a future council could come in and void that contract I and do, go with another Well, service. I do think there are exceptions because to 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 the no. law because then every contract the council approves would technically fall, no, no, which means advanced disposal. No, no, only 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 the um, folks that report to council. Only council's responsibility. Council has the town manager the town attorney and um, to and the judge and this auditor I think falls in that category also I'm not belaboring this I'm just saying if that's the case then every two years we can only we can only contract with them for two years because this council cannot bi uh, bind a future council in a contract that's all I'm saying am I right okay Did you say that that was yeah, right? Because didn't we just, with this new auditing firm, did we two years? We did, we did four. Yeah. four. We have the right four. before we got a contract. I'm just saying, yeah. But a future council can.
can void that contract. They yeah. need to know that. That's all I'm saying. They need to know that. This council cannot bind a future council to a contract. Right. You buy the town, you buy the council. No. No, that contract, a future council cannot contract, anyway, it's a legal <coughs> thing, but a future, con a future council cannot, this council cannot bind a future council to that already in contract, because it's our prerogative every two we years. Not, can we not sign any Only contract. for those things that we control, so not for the whole town. But y'all actually control everything. No, I'm saying, but so, so I understand that, but so that's that's separate. Was, Only so when council. Okay, so the contract with state building comes in, we can't bind the next council to that contract either. The things that council um, control, which as far as which, which is the judge, the manager, the man. That's why we. That's why we vote on them every two years. I don't think, I and that, I think the auditor comes under that. That's all. And, 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 and I'll be here. I'll, I'll, I'll be here. 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 I'll be Okay. The, pre the next council that comes in has the prerogative to look at all contracts. Right. Do away with them, extend them for one Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. The only three people, the only three positions that the council must uh, reappoint right. are your judge and your lawyer and your. Uh, right. Audit. Uh, Audit. The only I think Paul's going to get to. Because we always do it. <laughs> At the first council meeting, but that's what. Ask Ted to find out. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm, I'm gonna research it. Okay. All right, moving into the administration budget. Um, current budget amounts five hundred two thousand four hundred. Uh, the most significant change that occurred um, weren't a lot of weren't many changes within the budget. The most significant one uh, was related to the building inspections for the town. Uh, previously, we had budgeted for a part-time building inspector. Um, we've had little interest in the position since it's been posted. Um, Ted, can you go back for a minute? I'm, I yes, wasn't quite ready to okay. finish with the council budget. I have one last question. We have last year we spent eleven thousand dollars, basically in three three bucks, on travel, um, but yet we have budgeted seventeen thousand. So we. Have we have the municipal association meeting that we're getting ready to be paying for anybody that wants to go to the municipal association meeting. And we're going to have the upfront fees for that, which is going to be potentially lodging our hotel registration costs. And I'll tell you the MASC registration if last year with six members was pretty bulky um, in, in putting that together. I don't know how many members we have, but that's going to run it up some. Right. It's just hard to if when, when we have these these items that are like ten months and then we're looking at a, at a year it of is. what we're requesting. So in the past, do you know approximately how much that conference we spent on that conference? Like is it it, well, it all depends. This past year we had five members attend. One, two, three, four, five. We have five members attend. Previous years, we've had. Do you remember about how much we spent on those uh, on those items? It's going to be right around fifteen hundred dollars per, per member. Per time, you just but, training. Uh, but if only two members that, yeah. go one year, it, we're going to come in under. What we're budgeting based off of is fifteen hundred dollars a member, which is going to cover each member to do the municipal association meeting every year. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No. Since you can open it back up again. Now, um, wait, I don't know if we all know, but I, you know, I'm serving on the National League of Cities um, Committee, and there are, um, there's a win, uh, summer. It uh, was program. the, it was the, uh, the small city. Small city summit. Okay, the small city summer is in Camden. Camden. Right, so I, I figured that it would be about um, 300 bucks a night. Plus travel, probably about um, 
1200 bucks. Rent? Do you remember the rate? I don't know what the registration was, but about 1200. But I would like to, to put 800 in, and I'll pay my way with the rest of it into that budget if that's okay with everybody. Um, and it's just a one-year uh, appointment. So I think that's pretty fair. If we, if we do 800, council, council does 800. I do the other four. For what purpose? This is the National League of Cities. They have, uh, I'm on the small cities. Uh, I'm aware. Yeah, so they have an, um, a summer meeting. I'm aware, of I'm aware of the meeting. Okay, so what I was asking council is to cover 800 out of the 1200 bucks for that. Uh, for that so adding an additional 800 right. to the training and travel. The upcoming budget year? No, what uh, 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 upcoming what month was that? It, I want to say it's in July. Oh, October. No, 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 no. October. You're talking about the, you're talking about the league, not, not the national league, not the, the meeting in Washington. This is a separate meeting in Kansas. Yeah, that's I'm, coming I'm up. I'm aware of it. I think it's in October. No, it's in June. It's either June or July. Hold on, it's in October. Right. Um, at the central so now you want to put $800 in the budget right. for you to attend that meeting? Right. Why? Why what? What if everybody wanted to go to that meeting? They can't go. Because they're, they they're not on the board. No, you don't have to be a board member to attend that meeting. Well, if somebody else want to go, <laughs> well, I don't have a problem with that. Any council member can attend. Okay. Do you, do you want to go? I'm that, going. Well, we're not talking okay. about the, the standing travel expense okay. line out. What? Would that not just come out of the existing well, travel expense? If there's enough money in there. If each member, that $1,500 for each member pretty much covers the Municipal Association meeting and probably Hometown Legislative Action Day um, type expenses. Another conference. And then we budgeted two people to go to National League of Cities conference in Washington. Um, and that's so if another member wanted to go, it would take over the fifteen hundred dollar mark. I do know that. And that's that's just an average. Now, if we don't have everybody, if all nine members don't go to the municipal association meeting in July, you have some remaining funds out of that. But if all nine members were to go, you wouldn't have the extra money. That's the green That's the green I'm good. I mean, that, that, you answered all my questions. I don't intend to, to attend this year's annual conference, so uh, that would free up money for that. I'll be talking to you. I have to go on. All right, that's cool. So we, we go to that. All right. Thank you, man. But you can't do that. Why? If you don't uh, put money in the budget, that's to be for everybody. Yeah. He didn't put money in the budget. Jason just said he's not going. But the budget. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, he, said, he just said you're not going, right? No, I, don't, I don't intend to go to the Okay, there you go. So I'm swiping his money. We got to vote as a council. Okay, well, we'll vote. <laughs> we really don't have to vote on that. He just said you're not going. So it's just administrative function at that point. Right, you can come to council and, and, okay, and, and ask to go. And in well, that's not the rule, but yeah, I'll ask, ask Ted if there are funds available. Then we vote. Okay, but that's not really the rule. We can do that one. Room. If there's the money left over, it is the council person requested. That's not the group. Uh, is that, is that uh, how you know? What's been done in the past yeah. is if you go to the MASE annual meeting and you exhaust what is the $1,500 you're allotted, right. and another member doesn't go and you want to thank you, sir, and you want to um, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else, it's traditionally been brought back to council. And right. and that's, that's why I wanted to put it in the budget. We don't have to go through that process of, uh, of putting the budget in. And, and if you watch today, you can add that money to the uh, you can add that money to the budget. It's only eight hundred bucks. We'd have to do it for everybody. Just like we're doing. Everybody not on the board, but anybody that wanna go can go. I would say this, if you look for a recommendation from me, I would say when that time comes, just bring it, let them vote on it. All right, I'm just saying, John, if you, if you win, you're going to be doing it in the official. 
Because you got on the Mayor, can we move on? Are you on? Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, Which one are you going to do next? What I said is administration. Huh? Administration. Administration budgets next. Administration. Keeping up. Okay. So, going back in, previously we we had budgeted for a part-time inspector, um, and since it's been open, we've had little to no interest in. It's it's really hard to find a part-time building official, and. We've done some calling around and talking with different cities, and everybody's really got shortages right now. Millennials are not getting in to the profession of, of building official, and there's a shortage of building officials statewide. But, so as you'll recall, we did the um, temporary contract with SafeBuild to provide building inspection services and plan reviews for the town. I can tell you that in speaking with the staff that works with them every day, permit clerks and, and, and uh, Pat in the zoning administrative role. And in talking with contractors, there's a lot of positive feedback so far on Safe Bill and the job that they're doing. What happened to uh, Willis? He resigned. Why? From the town. Why? He said he wanted to focus on city funding? No. Now, who signed, who signed off on Wizz's, the work that we did without a permit? Who signed off on that? Because we are liable for that. My understanding is that project shut That's down and done. Huh? That's a budget out? Yeah, he's talking about... He's there's talking not about, a firm... He's talking about... He's talking about work shut down. We're not talking about Okay, well, the reason why I asked that is because he's talking about a building and stuff yeah. that we had before. Right. Which is a part-time job. But okay. we but we we no longer have and what I'm okay. saying is is All I, right, I don't ahead. foresee us filling that position okay. with the town. I think it's gonna be difficult because there's just a shortage of building officials out there, building in space. Yeah, I have one quick question on that. When we were um, in one session that we did talk that we were that the staff was going to check with um, quite a few of the surrounding towns to see if we could share one because thirty six thousand dollars for that is mm -hmm. a new line item. Granted, we, we don't have our inspector to pay, but um, I, I would I would caution us that have we done a good a thorough job? The way their con well the way their contract is written, it's an 80 20 contract. Oh, sorry. Um, have we done a good job making <laughs> sure that we've exhausted all the possibilities of sharing? That's my only thing. We, I know the town of Saluda utilizes Safe Bill. Um, Saluda County now utilizes Safe Bill. We did reach out. The only way Lexington County is open to their inspectors is if we turn complete building permits and all that over to Lexington County as a whole. How much would that save us? Well, it would just get us out of the building inspection and permitting. The, the downfalls and so what we save us $36,000 then. But we would have no revenue coming in okay. either. It would cut the revenue, uh, I'll but say it would this, also as cut. As a builder, yeah. Lexington County is already short staffed. They're one of the jurisdictions that doesn't have enough building inspectors. I think they're two men down currently. And their plan reviewer, who is supposed to be a full time in the office job, is out doing inspections for them. Mm -hmm. We add our building roles to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we would get the kind of service. How many do we have for you? How, how many inspections? Yeah. Uh, 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 how many we have for one? I mean, how, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. We have. Uh, I would say. I would say we have hundreds a month. Not enough for a full time person. No, it's not enough. For, that's the thing. We don't. We don't have enough to justify a full time building inspector at this point. If you contract, if you contract with, the, with the town, can we put? Uh, um, can we put language in the contract? That addresses what Jason said. There is no contract with the county. We would we would get out of. We, we would get completely out. Mm -hmm. But everybody who wants to build here would have to go to Lexington County to file for a permit. Right. They would have to go to Lexington County to apply to so request their inspections. Everything would have to happen at the county level. Okay. And it's from a builder's perspective, it's much better as a builder That's to deal with locally with some with local people. And people, the comment is made very often that they would rather come here and deal with us than to have to go to Lexington County. And That's fine, but. If we catch, if code enforcement catches some roofers doing a roof and who didn't pull their permits or licenses in advance, 
rather than coming to town hall right here in town and being able to get that permit, they would have to go all the way to Lexington County. I like the idea of having our own person in that back. How much time do we get for 36000 dollars Well, I mean, how, what if we have... Again, it's triple our inspections. It, is that it's more annual? annual? It, it's, an 80, it's an 80 20 concept, and, and that's what the contract became. So they would get, if we have 46000 in revenue um, projected, they would get 80% of that revenue would show as an expense going out, and we get to keep 20%. Um, okay. And again, we. The basically the way we did it is we've looked at how much revenue we've brought in and permitting over the past couple of years. We've got that and then we took the percentage that would be for safe built. And that's what we projected Thank the you, that answers. Thanks. And just I, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but I want to make sure. Um, they only get paid based on permits pulled right. and fees paid. Right. We're not just paying them a lump sum thirty six thousand right. dollars. They're paid based on how, how much work takes place in the town. Yeah, if we have a slow permitting year, well, revenue them. will be down, but their expense will be down. If we have an extremely busy, we could exceed our revenue, but we could exceed our expenses as well. It just depends on how much development and and building occurs that year. Okay, so. thank you. What's the difference? Well, I mean, thirty-six thousand. You can't tell me we can't. We can't. We find may somebody not to spend thirty-six, but we can't find somebody that will do it. $36, building a fit, for us to get a full-time building official with the town, we would have to pay probably fifty thousand dollars. Well, yeah. we've been trying. There's just there's no interest in part-time. Steve, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, certified. Certified. Yeah, state certified. Anyway, let's. I, I would like to see what, did, what have we done. Well, uh, uh, we're going to do it here. If we don't, yeah, but what have we done to find that person? We've reached out to other cities too to talk well, to I mean, them. We, about we have you advertised that, that position? It's been it's been on the municipal association website, which is where a lot of people who are in building official look for jobs that are open, and we have put it on the town website. Um, Indeed. Indeed.com. We put it in the town city. Yeah. State. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other Thank you. Finish with administration. Yes. Can we go back a minute? To that one? Yeah. Yeah. Now, am I the only member of council who feel like that in addition to going to the meetings, learning and um, developing as a um, professional, that council's time is worth something? That council should receive a stipend also? Am I the only member of council who feels that way? Yeah. I, I Nobody else mentioned it. And I'm going to address, address that later. Uh, I thought Terry said he was going to address that something later. We were. But we need to discuss it. No, I, I agree, but I think it's it's later. Well, I mean, if, if y'all want to go, if y'all want to go later, later this evening is what I anticipate. I'll oh, this evening? Yeah, this evening. This evening. In just a little bit, I was going to get to the list of additional requests, and, and that's, that's scary, one of the items scary. on there. And you put stuff to the end. When everybody really well, that's, that's everybody's wish list is at the end. <laughs> no. Right? Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, you call it a wish list. Well, I mean, you know, the, the request the and the request. request by people. I, okay. I knew that there was a request for council compensation, and so, again, I threw an option out. It's not one you have to go with, but it's an, it's what taking it back to the way it was previously as the option out. Why didn't you uh, just put it in the budget? Because council's not directed me as a majority to put council compensation in. That was something that y'all were going to discuss, and then if everybody agrees or majority agrees, we would include it. So we're going to talk about it now. Or we're going to I mean, we can, we can, we can. No, I'm just saying we can circle. Yeah, move us along, and we'll do it at the end. What are you, what are you going to do? I'd like to stay on schedule with Jack, okay. frankly, just so we don't get confused. We will uh, be coming back. Don't, don't rush me when we get to the no, end. No, no, exactly. <laughs> well, I we don't disagree with you. I, you know, I, I'm in. It, it was slated to talk council compensation. It's just we were going to get through each of the budgets and get to that point. Um, fire department budget, uh, budget amount four hundred ninety thousand. Um, really, we've had the fuel is something that we've had to increase in this budget with the increased call volume, and you take the fuel mileage of these fire trucks, or you take the increased call volume. It's it's taking that fuel usage line item up. 
Um, again, electrical cost. Uh, fire department got proactive. We got an energy grant, installed LED lighting um, in conjunction with the reduced rates. That has cut the electricity line item in that budget tremendously. Um, and again, I mentioned it earlier, with regards to their capital line item, it's one of the only budgets that you'll see that currently reflects funds in a capital line item. But again, those are every year costs that we have. There's no a new additional capital that, that has been inserted into their budget. There are numerous line items that have fluctuated up and down um, slightly. But that again, that's just based on what we're seeing. Are you, um, are, you, line items. are you adding um, firefighters? Um, and again, when we get to the request in a little bit, there there was a request by the fire department for three new firefighters. Is that reflected in there? Or no? It is. It's reflected in what we're going to look at a little bit, along with council compensation. So in, in this budget, is that in there? Oh, the three new firefighters have not been built into their okay. budget at right. this point. The request and what it would take is is on the list. That we'll talk about. Okay. <laughs> I move that we, uh, Council, I move that we uh, fire Jay Hendricks. And oh, oh, man. <laughs> and hire his, hire, we want to hire his, we want to hire his 10 year old son to, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we got child labor law. Too. <laughs> 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 so time, their request was for full time. Full time. Full time fire. We have how many now? Five. Four. We have five, 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 five full time. Yeah, three, five. three did our own shift work. And Chief feels we need three more. Well, the, he he's done his part by putting the request in so that we can have a discussion. <laughs> so, Not three and two. I will tell you when we go Not into budget three. season. You don't need three. When we go into budget season, we <laughs> we don't we say put your request I'll in. It can't be considered if you don't put a request in. It does right. not you mean we have to go with talk, it. You gonna give him opportunity to talk at oh. that point? No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. he can we'll he can speak when that time comes up. Okay. When we get to the request, all right, all right. Uh, court I budget. Have one yes, ma'am. I have a question about the fire department. All right. the very last item, capital, and this is just a question. This year it was forty-one thousand, but we're we're saying it's going to be twenty-two four. Where are you? The last so, line item. Oh, okay. Fire department. Uh -huh. uh, and if uh -huh. that's ten months and it's going to go up, are we covering ourselves? No, most of the capital has already been purchased for this year. Um, and, and keep in mind, we had some items budgeted that we bought this year, like putting a new airline brake system in to the fire station uh, that we're not going to have this coming year. That is just the reoccurring things we buy on an annual basis. A fire hose that becomes damaged. So. For the fire department? Yeah, we had some cap. We had capital. We purchased the new fire pickup truck this year. Uh, we had the airline brake system this year. Jay helped me out, helped remind me what all we had. Then we had our normal reoccurring fire hose bunker gear. Minotaur pagers. And the standards are high on those for very good reasons. Uh, and I think that, I don't have a number in front of me, but I believe that capital line item dropped this week. Right, right. right. Last year we had a pickup truck in, in that line item. So it's taken back down to what are the year to year reoccurring expenses at this point, with no additional requests added in at this point. At this time. At this time. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the court budget, um, 119400 Just to note, there were no significant changes with this budget this year, just some minor increases and decreases to some of the line items. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you Police department budget. Um, Current budget amount is one million eight hundred sixty-nine thousand eight hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> okay. Second. Second.
this is probably something I just don't know. I I know that Robert Cook is was appointed judge not what a year ago, two years well, ago. Reappointed. Reappointed. Okay. Well, actually, what we did was we took him to contract. He previously did not have a contract, uh -huh. and um, he had requested some insurance and a contract, and all that was done at one time. But he's been the judge now for for a number of years. Okay. And did we pick up the cost of his employee benefits? So that was like an increase in his salary? Yes, it is. And, okay. Yes. We'll talk about that thing. But, I mean, what's your question? Like, right. What? Well, no, well, question? it's in his new contract. My question is, weren't we paying him just at, as a judge, and then when when we had a contract with him, I what I heard was that we didn't raise his salary. We just went in from not a non-contract to a contract. However, if we're giving employee benefits on top of that, that certainly is an increase in a salary. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know what that increase was to provide him with mm -hmm. the employee benefits because that's basically a raise, which may be fine. I just because, because, yeah, because I need to know that because he is um, a JD. He's actually a lawyer, and most judges are not. Most magistrate judges have a high school diploma, so he's actually a So what? We need no credentials at all to be a judge. Right. Yeah. So, so I'm order, saying, so we'll is that a good expenditure? Is what yeah. I'm asking. I think so that because well, what we were paying him? Yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah. the because only thing the one was added was full family, full family medical is what was added, and exactly. it was right around eleven thousand a year for the full family medical. Okay, and that's I think that's bargain. fair for that's what he get, for what he get, and we didn't give him a raise; we just paying. He didn't. He was not getting the money right. in his hand. Right. He's right. Right. He, he got the employee. Yeah, but I mean, he's not getting. We're right. paying that. Okay, thank you. All right, um, for the police department budget, um, <laughs> again, one of the one of the biggest changes that occurred was going back to the new dispatch system. That last year there was a hundred and forty something thousand dollar expenditure uh, for a new dispatch system, which we received eighty percent of that that money back. But that's taken out of this year's fiscal budget, so that's affecting the bottom line um, more significantly than anything. Um, again, going back to what we talked about with victims assistance and then in revenue with fines and fees, um, we're also able to reduce down what we're having to send the state and state fines because we're not receiving as much, so we're not having to pay out to the state as much as we were. Um, with the installation of the new dispatch system, we uh, one of the things that we had to have before was a dedicated phone line for NCIC, secured line uh, to slip for NCIC. Uh, with the new system, we no longer had to have that, so that was able to pull 4,000. Uh, the new dispatch system was able to pull, pull 4,000, put 4,000 back into the budget. Um, but we did receive a grant for a new fingerprint scanner. Um, there's no more ink on a card. It'll all be digital now. And when those fingerprints are put in, it will go directly into SLED's database um, versus having to send cards and maintain cards. There is a $2,500 annual expense that's been added to have that piece of technology. So a little bit of offsetting from the NCIC to the fingerprint scanner from a maintenance cost standpoint. Um, those were some of the bigger uh, things that, that changed. One thing to note um, as well is in the past in the police department we've had a number of vacancies that would exist throughout the years. People come and then you get into the hiring. When you get around the hiring, there always tended to be vacancies. We This past year we've really retained a lot of police officers and haven't had a lot of vacancies. Um, so the salary line item 
has not always been funded at the total number of employees because there's always been vacancies throughout the year and we were basically eating up a lot of money in the budget this year we're going to be all but about to break even and we feel like if we're going to retain we need to add a little bit more to that salary line item if, if we're not having the vacancies like we used to have right. so, because we just don't have the number of vacancies that we've had in the past it was okay. well, you done I, I really want to hear from Chief on this, okay. um, but is it possible for us to, instead of writing tickets on the blue ticket for the state, is it possible for council to um, issue tickets based on town ordinance, which means that we would get all that revenue? State law uh, does not let you write traffic tickets on the town but a state traffic ticket. But can write a town ordinances, but, but you can't regulate traffic on a non-state right. ticket. I'm talking about like uh, disorderly conduct, any other type of offense where we can write that ticket. If we write a ticket for disorderly conduct and it's a town violation, then the town gets that money, right? Yes. Okay, so council, we need to look, well that's true, <laughs> we need to look at it, but let's go back to what we discussed earlier, but if they're not going to pay it, they're not gonna pay it. Well, I understand, but I'm saying, but if they when they do pay it, that we money, get the money. You are exactly correct. Well, that's we a, that's a way of raising revenue um, for we the town this, versus. We buy this sort of kind of on the under the town order. Right, but we don't have to do it on a separate ticket. It doesn't matter on that. Well, so that money come that money comes to us because it's a non-traffic offense. Okay, so all non-traffic offenses come to the town and not go to not the state. all non. It's the state has a list. Right. Can you hate that? Some of them we keep on. Right. That's what I'm telling council. If the, if our police department writes more tickets, that the revenue stays with the town because they kind of overlap, which you can write a ticket for. That um, you know it might be the same offense, but if you call it something else that's a town violation, that money comes with the town. So we might need to look at that as a way to raise some revenue for victims' assistance. We hear market for victims' assistance or to the court for, for doing that instead of going to a general fund, which would become an issue, maybe a legal issue, um, trying to balance the budget on the back of those tickets. But uh, that's Chief, the way to get some Chief, revenue. Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there's a victim involved in anything, that cannot be written under a town ordinance right. because... Any, that has, any, any law that has a, any violation of the law that has a victim, we have to pay but it has to be on a state ticket. It can't be on a municipal ticket. Right. And now I'm getting into right. what the state has been, done a very good job of putting fees and assessments on, on charges, and uh, and we have to comply with those right. towns and the towns. Oh yeah. Canada just got in trouble for not paying those state fees. Right. But if it's a if it's a violation of the town ordinance, and our officers write a ticket that's a violation of the town ordinance and it doesn't conflict right. with the state. We get that revenue. That's right, all I'm right. saying. Right. So we need to look. And at that's that. occurring now, isn't it? Right. We buy them. Right. Well, can we need to break that out so we can see if you want to increase something, <coughs> and it's you know you can have the officers write more tickets under the town ordinance versus if it's a comparable offense. If we have an option. We do. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. It's an right. opportunity. What, what you're right. saying, Chief, is when you have that option, we do. You write it under the town ordinance. We do write it. So he's, they're already working. Well, I like to see that broken out in, in, in the stats if we can do that. So we can see how many, how much of the money is coming for town ordinance violations versus the state. Okay. All right. And I know the state's closed the gap and, and gotten the Supreme Court to, to side with them in some rulings because there were a lot of small towns a few years ago yeah, that were creating town ordinances for speeding, creating right. town ordinances right. for that, that so yeah. that they could not have to send the state anything, right. and basically the Supreme Court jumped in and said, oh no, we're not going out there. Yeah, because they were abusing it when that took place. <laughs> I was a victim. I know one of the cities that was that was hot and heavy doing Newberry it. Newberry was one. Close. This one's like you're going to Myrtle Beach on 378. I won't, I won't <laughs> dime them out, but. Let's get the budget. <laughs> That's your budget, huh, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. 
street department, aka public works budget. <laughs> At six hundred fifty-five thousand three hundred, as it's currently budgeted, um, this is the this is the budget in which we reflect our advanced disposal trash expenses going out is within so this it is within this budget. This is the money how we much send is out. It? How much is the pass through? Well, not all that's passed through. Some of that are town services that we pay for. Well, how much the dumpsters? The, yeah. Well, how much is it passed through? The look at the equivalency of what we bring in. We don't highlight like that. Yeah. It's hard to read. Yeah, it's in black and white because that's actually yeah. a lighter gray. But when printed like that, it came out a little dark. Um, I don't have that broken out on okay. what, how much of that is town, how much of I know eight thousand of that is is going to. Lexington County for the Saluda County residents that, that their trash is being taken to Lexington County. And that's under the garbage collection all right? Is that the one? Mm -hmm. So so we've got to at this point there's a discussion that we need to kind of focus on. Um, and that is talking about recycling because what's not reflected in this that we've got to talk about we know advanced Dis disposal has done their annual CPI increase. Um, but since July, y'all go back to the recycling conversation that we had in the work session about the rising cost of disposing of recycling. Since July 2018, it has increased from $25 a ton to $83 a ton. Is that glass? A lot of it. A lot. Glass is heavy. It's not just the same. I mean, it's just the, it's more than triple. Recycle whatever you recycle. I mean, the cost the cost is going from 25 to 83, but your tonnage fluctuates up and down depending on the, 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 the price of the glass. Then, well, not China is killing China shut China's down. shut down receiving recycling, and mm -hmm. nobody knows where to take it at this point. Um, well, got a and so much of the recycling is contaminated <laughs> that they can't do anything with it. So what we're getting at is if rates continue to increase and we look at our average monthly tonnage that we're bringing in we should expect up to eight thousand dollars in surcharges remember we are charged a surcharge monthly based on the tonnage that was brought in last month in recycling it's way um, and then it's at that that day's rate when it's disposed of so we're looking at up to eight thousand dollars in surcharges. That is not currently included in the budget. That's eight thousand dollars on an annual basis. Eight is not a monthly expense. This is not a monthly. This is annual. Annual. This is annual. We're this looking at around eight thousand a year based on what's been occurring with the recycling market, and then based on what our discussion with Advanced Disposal has been, that we're at least going to be maintaining around this eighty-three dollar mark, or even getting higher moving forward. So I got to bring it up. We we either build eight thousand dollars in our budget to to account for this additional cost, or we have already calculated based on our average number of customers a month that we have uh, to pass the cost on to customers would mean twenty seven cent a month to make up the eight thousand dollars. In a, well, in addition to the 42 cent CPI increase, that would be 69 cent a month if we were going to pass the recycling cost on to the customer versus budgeting for that cost. Yeah, that's minimal, but it still be more of a psychological thing. Uh, no, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm, I'm just putting this information out for the sake of discussion because options to consider for this budget are we absorb the $8,000 that we're, we're looking at is, costing us for this coming year we either pass it on we pass it on to the customer or we end recycling collection period which some cities are going to um, a lot of others aren't in favor of it That's but it cost us end up on the street. and and mm -hmm. it, it could end up in the street um, yeah. or we look at in some type of discussion on restructuring a, the recycling that, that we have in town. I will tell you, one person threw out the idea. Uh, yes, sir. How, okay, how many people are we paying for 
to get picked up for recycling. How many customers are we actually picking up? I don't know how many we actually, because some people don't put it out. Some people put it out once a month, not bi-weekly, because they just don't do as some much recycling. It, it, it would be hard to to truly know, because I don't think they count the number of houses. They're they're tracking the tonnage. They're they're not tracking the number of pickups. Uh, on my street, there's not a whole lot of people to recycle. I did it once a month when I was. When oh, I, does that make a difference people. if they're doing it by tonnage? Would it make? Yes, ma'am. Because the the rest of recyclables are going into the normal garbage picker. Mm -hmm. It's increasing the cost. If they're if they're, if they're not yeah, throwing so. that green top bin. They're putting it into the normal blue bean. Mm -hmm. And that we pay for it. We pay for it double. If they don't put nothing out there, we still pay to take a point. Mm -hmm. A lot of cities are eliminating glass. Now, yeah. it, it sounds simple in concept, but the education of what can and cannot be recycled and then keeping them from throwing glass in there, I mean, it, are you truly curbing it? You could make the marketing attempt and we could push it very hard to, to cut out glass. But glass is heavy. Glass is heavy, and in addition to what that we have to fight against, is the recycle bin that I have has a sticker on the top that shows glass is recyclable. Unless we're changing all those stickers. They would be. Would they? Okay. They would be. That'd be part of it. Uh, what, what are you going to do with the glass? Is it in the regular trash? Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's what they do so now anyway. That's, that's what most cool. people do anyway. So, Gallo mind, Seth is a recycling guru. <laughs> No, he seriously is. His knowledge level on this recycling stuff is through the roof. So I'd love for him to weigh in if y'all don't mind. Because while you're doing that, I'm going to run the restroom with y'all. Recycling, according to Mike Rich, who's the new operations director here, director for advanced disposal, uh, approximately 40% of what's disposed of on a bi weekly or even monthly basis is, is glass, at the maximum. So if you eliminate glass, you're potentially only going to reduce your weight by a maximum of 40%. So that means you'll still have to pay for 60%. Whether you have 2,000 customers or you have 10 customers on a route, the tonnage is what we pay for a month. And right now, our cap in our contract, we pay on tonnage per disposal, of disposal, not number of pickups made. The cost has our, on our surcharge. So in our contract, we have a $25 base charge for recycling services. So if Sunoco, who's the area recycling center, which is over there toward Hartsville for, for this region, if they charge over that, we pay a surcharge. <laughs> well, when we first did our contract, we set it at $25, and, and recycling at that point was around $15 to $20, and normal trash disposal was $25 per ton, which is built in our contract. So Screaming Eagle over there in Richland County charges $25 per ton for garbage. Well, come the fall and into t currently to where we are today, we're up to $83, $86, I forgot which one it is, per ton for recycling. So our surcharge cap was $25. We're now at, let's just say, $83. It's out of $83 or $86. I don't remember off the top of my head. Right, let's go with $83. Then. Thank you. See, I remember everything. So we're at $83. So that gap, that difference is what we're paying for on a monthly basis per ton. You eliminate glass that could maximum, at maximum, reduce our weight by 40%, but you still have the other 60% to pay for. And that's regardless if they're doing 2,500 pickups or 2,000 pickups. So the other option, well, as, as Ted mentioned, we have the ending, the reducing, or the rearranging of the fee. And it's, it's uh, we we're not pitching any particular scenario on this. We could just tell you what the consequences of each path would take. In my mind, the unfortunate thing about deleting glass is glass is probably the only item that is instantly recyclable. It's the easiest to uh, recycle. Well, it's that, and it, you, you don't you can recycle it over and over again without it losing its its characteristics. Paper falls apart, plastic falls apart. It gets weaker as it gets recycled. Glass does not. Um, so that's that's a long term downside. Not not necessarily for the budget, but environmentally uh, to removing glass from it. Recycling option, but we're talking dollars and cents. It's you know, a different thing to all together. Okay. So I have a couple things to say about that. <coughs> one, um, one option that we may think about <coughs> is splitting the difference with the uh, with our consumer. So instead of passing the whole yeah. that whole you know fee onto them, 
we'll just do half of it. Split the difference with them. The other thing is that it's I would about a fee. It's a rate increase, right? Right, but it's but you a fee. Okay, well you you, you based the well rate. I just want to. I just want because the vocabulary I think is very important okay. when we're talking about things like this. It's not a fee. It's it is. Is it what? It's a service. Your service. Okay, so it's a it's a difference without no. distinction. But okay, so the service rate, the rate, we split the rate. Um, the amount of the rate increase with the, uh, with the uh, consumers. Um, the other thing is that I like to see staff um, research glass recycling, recycling companies. In Greenville, they have a company that actually um, recycles and kind of manufactures other things using glass. And that way, that company is very aggressive with seeking glass because they make money off of it. And we have an industrial park here. If we can marry a uh, glass recycling company, if, you know, give them an incentive to get into the uh, industrial park, we could actually make some money off of glass recycling glass. So that's something that we that we may be able to look at going forward. That's all. Do you know in Greenville, do they give the residents separate recycling bins just for glass? Yeah, because that company is there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's what they do. I mean, and they really have to. I think they collect it also. Yeah. Or yeah. they provide a place for the for the city mm -hmm. to take it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the city may grab it, take it to, to the recycling. Well, we can look yeah. into that yeah. company yeah. and yeah. Yeah. see if there's yeah. an option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, it's, it's, I yeah. Googled it. And, um, and you hit on something yeah. I was going to say is yeah. is if. What I put here was if the whole cost were to be passed on. If there, if y'all wanted to look at a sharing, you're instead of 27 cent, you're looking at 13 or 14 cent, and mm -hmm. basically we, yeah, we take we take a hit. They take we a budget hit. on the revenue side. We budget four thousand more dollars in revenue coming in, and we budget the eight thousand on the expense side, and that's mm -hmm. a, that's a shared cost yeah. um, for it. Or you pass the whole thing on, or we absorb the whole thing. Yeah. We it's just that we have to look for the sake of this budget. We can't ignore what's occurring with recycling, and we have to do something. So um, it's either paid for by something. taxes from the town, right? It's, it's either paid for by essentially taxes yes, or it's paid for by the people who are using the service. Correct. <laughs> and 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 it's or any worth, combination it's worth, there. Yeah, the it's, com it's worth looking into. It's worth mm -hmm. looking into to find out what companies actually Me take so. the glass yeah. and everything. Because, you know, like I said, I know for a fact that Greenville does collect glass. Well, and if nothing else in the interim, just these are my thoughts coming out. It's certainly up to y'all for, for the discussion. But um, if we wanted to initially stop the collection of glass until we could research and, mm -hmm. and, and figure out more of a long-term solution to that, we could cut out glass collection to cut it down and then do a shared cost and maybe that would reduce it down even more. I think it should go on our streets and red I, I personally would be against cut it out. How does each person pay for the uh, recycle? That they just pay one sanitation bill. Yeah. They just pay one twelve dollars and ten cent, about to be twelve so if they pay twelve ten a month to have their recycle recycle picked up recycle trash and trash recycling trash and recycle mm -hmm. well, how much of that trash how much of that is trash and how much of that is recycled uh, it's not broken down to us I mean that's just what advanced disposal well, what I'm getting to is the citizen is paying for their recyclables to be picked up and they're not using it. so where does that money go <laughs> well, you're paying advance disposal. Whether you use it or not. Whether you, whether use, you use it or, it or not. not. Yeah. Right. So that goes to them. Right. I mean, they have to have a contractual yeah, price. For them to give the best <laughs> price, there's got to be the built-in <laughs> guarantees. They, it, it, Why are you looking like that? Oh. that would cover and the it, it is what it is. And there's well, not a, always negotiating the contract mm -hmm. situation. Well, I can tell you from... We had an opportunity to negotiate that flex scale, but we didn't. So I can tell you from a rate, a sanitation rate standpoint, the R1210 is super competitive 
compared to the majority of people around us. Well, and I don't blame and them we because are we haven't done anything to promote from the town's point of view. We haven't promote. We haven't really started to promote recycling. So we can't be mad that people don't recycle. Don't and you know what, Owen? If people realize they pay for it anyway, they probably would just start doing it just because they pay for it anyway. Yeah. A lot of people do recycle. I don't yeah. think I know everybody doesn't, but a lot of people do recycle. I mean, there I'm are people, that, numerous people, that pay for multiple recycling cards because they deal with a lot of cardboard. And, and, and most people don't even, don't even know that it's what's recycling card. They just throw it in the trash. Right. Ted, can I ask a question? We seem to have a lot. Make could we have a discussion of how long we we want to stay with this tonight, or do we want? If it's just a question, or do we want to schedule a second to hour just so we don't get brain dead? Um, How's everyone? I can tell you from a staff standpoint, we'd be fine if we got through general fund tonight and wanted to have another work session to cover age tax and utility, we'd be fine with that as well. That's up to y'all though. That's fine. That's, That's fine. fine. Yeah. But I would suggest we get completely through a general fund if, we can, if we can. So, so wait, so what do we what do we what do we direct the staff with yeah. So we go split the message or if you'd like, if y'all just wanna okay. hold on to it, I do have this on that final list. Okay as well um i put it i put it on there street department i want to say about the street department and, and i've been saying this for a while is that we all have campaigned and i went back and read some old twin cities every candidate that has filled out that twin city questionnaire has put town beautification as one of the top five things that they're going to do and we haven't done it. And uh, we need to think about restructuring the street department, consolidating some of the departments so we get more people on the street. The town looks like crap. The parks look like, the parks look bad. And we promised people that we were gonna make that a priority and we haven't. We need to do that in this budget where we revamp we, we the street department. We have to do it. You know, we have, we, we have a lot of money going into the police department. We have a lot of money going into the uh, fire department. But our town does not have any curb appeal. When you, when you come in from Aiken and you see all that blight, and if you come in on 23 and you look down um, at uh, downtown Baseburg, that blight, you don't even think the town starts until you get to um, Walmart. Then you think that well, this is based for, for Walmart all the way back. And we need to really, um, I mean, I ain't trying to, this, this is not personal, but um, no, I, we need to We need to really. I think all of us probably have some ideas about it. Okay, you know, well. Funding, we, I mean, I certainly do. I've got some things that I could do. Yeah. Okay, what's well, this uh, reflected in the budget? I mean, well, you can say that in the conversation. Not, not yet, but I, 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 I don't know. This is the time to do it. Yeah. No, no, I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm not arguing with you. Okay, well, I'm agreeing you, with you. I can't. I can't tell I'm the difference. With you. Okay. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. Okay. I'm, I, I think we're all on that same page. <clears throat> let's let's. let's I think we continue on with what we're doing. Right. I don't think that if there's something inside that street budget that we need to do. Yeah, we do. We need to okay. take, We need to talk about how you maybe consolidate um, maintenance with the street department. You only have two employees. In the maintenance department, in the maintenance department, and one of those employees is, is the department head. Is it, is oh, really and if I may, a what? working department head. <laughs> okay, uh, and I, I'm not. This is not personal, Ted. No, no, I'm not, and I'm not taking it personal. Okay, but I, I just, to, I know what on a daily basis. He's under the hood of vehicles. He's underneath vehicles. Okay, but he's you know, working on vehicles. Yeah, but we we also have opportunity to outsource some of that stuff to mechanics in. in um, into um, uh, Chevrolet plays, you got the Walmart to do, to do tune-ups and oil changes and things like that. Also, we need to look at if at there's a much higher hourly well, you just said, I know, but you just said that we're doing the same thing with the building inspector, right? We, we're doing the same thing, we're contracting out because it saves us money. Have you looked at whether that would save us money or not? Well, I can tell you this. we. It, we did do a breakdown, and we looked at the number of old changes we did in a year. And when you take a, when you take an old change that you pay for at Walmart or anywhere else, and what it cost us to do the old change, 
it's cheaper for us to do the old changes. Well, I mean, I'd like to see that number is broken out. And then when you, if you got to take a head gasket off a vehicle and make a repair, you're going to pay yeah, 90 to $100 an hour. To yeah, but most, most, our, most, okay, our vehicles, most of our vehicles are under warranty, right? No. What vehicles not under warranty? The majority of them. No? The majority of them are not under warranty. Why? Most vehicles come with a three or five year warranty. We don't buy a third warranty. warranty. You still got to service them. Service well, I mean, I'm not saying that we're warranty. not servicing. I'm just saying my, my point is, is this. We need to do something in, uh, in uh, the street department. We need to get more people in there so that we make the town look better. All right? Now, you know, y'all do what you want to do with, with uh, maintenance, but i like to see what you're saying in black and white, because I do think that we can uh, save some money. Ted, did uh, you break this down for us last year? Because I don't remember this I will, I will, I will have to bring it back out. Mm -hmm. We had this discussion last year. Well, I don't know if we did or not. I just want to see. Yeah, yeah I know we did. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have to bring it back out and find it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We're going to do So, so, so also, a few years ago, we stopped picking up both. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had we had a problem for a while. I don't know if it's still we're still having that problem. There's people dumping stuff out at night, and we're not knowing who dumped it. So we had to go pick it up anyway. It, it's still we we've still saved a lot in and not doing standard. Uh, again, going back to bulk collection, ninety percent of what we were collecting was rental homes people had moved out and the renter of the property was putting their stuff by the road and and we were collecting yeah, but it don't matter that. we need to we need that, to pick that, that stuff was up. costing us about forty five thousand dollars a year for us to get back into bulk collection it's a forty five thousand well, dollars is year it the pick up that it's expensive or the or the getting rid of it it's expensive. getting rid of it so you have a tonnage price you have to pay a hauling price you have to pay and then you have to pay per price Per item, my, like a mattress, my, maybe five dollars. My memories are calling. Twenty five dollars. My memories are calling. The problems is this: these are these are business owners who are doing this. So these are the these are the owners of rentals, uh, apartment rentals, whatever, and mm -hmm. they're the ones that are end up costing. Now, are, are they not doing it now? No, no. They're, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. We we get the occasional couch in the creek, right. but it's not it's so, not as much as it even used to be. We're not um, we're not picking up somebody's. Oh, my renter moved out. I'm just gonna take right. all this stuff and throw it by the street because I, as as a landlord, I don't want right. to deal with it. Right. right. So they don't want to just pick it up. Well, I'm of, they, we don't they have, have the property on the property. Okay. So we do we do we can identify rental property from regular residential property, right? No, when we tracked, we logged every address where we were picking up bulk items, and we went back and compared right. it to legal residency versus non. -legal okay, so we can allow people who are in non-commercial residencies to do it, the people that are not, not to do it. Uh, an alternative would be a uh, call-in system. If a, a resident right. could call in and say, "I need to get rid of this," can the town pick it up? That way, we can distinguish. Right. And again, if council wants to consider this, but I think even in that method, you're looking at t we need to look at about at least twenty thousand dollars. I would think. Well, that's, that's to budget it. to yeah, but that's worth it to pick it up. It's worth it to keep the town. But does would it looking keep, good? Would it keep everything out of the I, I, I think, I think so. I think it, I think no. you'd be less likely. I think a landlord is less likely to load up a couch. And stick it in the creek. I don't think you have then a landlord throwing it in a creek. Huh? I don't think a landlord's throwing it in a creek. That's what I'm saying. The landlord's not going to do that. Right. Um, so if somebody calls, like Charles said, and say, "Look, I got a taller than what I, I haul it off myself now." In my district, if I see a mattress or something like that, no. I just pick it, put it in the truck, and take it down to Lexington and recycle anything that they would take. You know, um, I mean, I just do it because I don't want to see it on the side of the road. But um, I think that that person was able to call the town and say, look, you know, I'm, I'm sitting on a mattress. Can somebody come get it? And we come get it. All right, let's do that. Versus making the town look like. I, I don't, and I'll just respectfully disagree. I, I don't think it's leading to major issues. I think it's improved, and we do have instances, but we quickly jump out there. And I'm like you. If I see something, I'll stop and grab it. Well, okay, <laughs> what I'm saying. What we're saying is the same thing because you do it anyway. That's but what you just said. We the town to give us some ideas, and yeah. we can all, as council members, come up with some, uh, some ideas of what we can do about that. 
Okay. We, we, right. we do need to deal with it. I agree. Right. Well, we're already doing it. That's, yeah, that's the thing. So let's yeah. formalize what we know. Yeah. 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 All right. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so recycling. We're going to have to have a direction from a budgetary standpoint. Are we, are we absorbing the 8,000 sharing so, yet? Or, yeah, okay. I mean, as we're in the general fund and we're going to try and get the general fund to, to as much to where we hope for it to be to put it up for vote down the road. Why don't we just go ahead and split that 42 and add it onto the 27? We pay, pay well, well, pay no, 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 no. You would split the 27 cent. Um, if you're talking about a split method, you would go probably, y'all tell me 13 or 14 cent, whichever one you want. 14. 14. would take 14, they take 14. All right, so we, we look at 14 cent a month increase. Um, so now that would be, that would be 56 cent on the, uh, that the sanitation rates would be going up, so 56, so well, that'd be 1266. We would start billing July 1 for for solid waste recycling. We agreed them, so <laughs> you got that we agree on a lot today. <laughs> I mean, is that a consensus? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Say that again. <laughs> what? When you what? say who are you referring to is they pay 13 and we pay 14. But they being the customers. Yeah. Are, so if they pay the 13 and then we're okay. going to increase their rates but, but for no. the other 14, they're no. paying it off. No, no, no. no, no, no I'm added on to the CPI that Advanced Disposal is doing. Advanced Disposal is doing a 42 cent CPI that's already going, to that's going in effect July 1st. So if we're going to split the cost and do 14 cent, you're going to have to add it to this, and that's going to be 56 cent. So it would be 12. It would be going from 12 dollars and 10 cent to 12 dollars and 66 cent July 1st. Directly. So, from the so, if you so, so, so yeah, the, everybody, the everybody's utilities would go up. Comes the, out the, the solid, the, the sanitation is going up 42 cent at this point. We know. We know that's happening. That's the three and a half percent CPI. Can, can we educate the people on that too, uh, Seth, so that they know what we did was split the difference. It could have been more, but council stepped in and, and split the difference. Well, I'm just saying they can scream, but we can say, hell, we can. He yeah. really gave it all to you. What, what yeah. do we want to do about it? Or do we want to keep the glass in effect, or do we the even only, want to talk about it? The problem is it's probably going to continue going down. Right. I don't see the problem yeah. going away at the right. national or global level anytime soon. So if we decide to subsidize this piece of it, um, we're going, and it goes up again, right. it's going to be it's going to be more. Yeah, and again, more eight thousand. We're trying. It's still going to go up for them. Yeah. It's going to be more for both. And we're trying to add a little bit of inflation not into that, not too much. But if it goes up too much, then that's not. We're not really even going to be splitting it 50-50. So, are you saying that you, I'm, you I'm think not, we're kind of putting ourselves out there and splitting it? Um, that we're going to be kind of expected to do that every year, so oh, we absolutely. might not. Abs absolutely, do that. and it, maybe that's not a bad thing, but we just have to know that this is going to, to this is most likely going to continue this way, you know, at least for two years. Well, that's right. I mean, that's fair. No, well, no, I'm, and again, I'm not saying it's fair or not fair. Right. I'm just saying it's going to go up for us and them each year. Well, okay. Anything goes I up. Mean, Lance was maybe talking about the question of precedent. Right. I mean, um, it's and I don't, I don't disagree with this point. And we're all, we're all receiving the surface, the service if we're, you know, we're well, we, we may not be receiving it if we're not putting our trash and recycling out. But that's, that's coming. All that's the education. Yeah. But it, is, it is that. But um, <coughs> we don't get subsidized phone bills. Town. We don't get, so, I'm yeah, so if you got a 15 cut from uh, SNG, though, we, we did get that. That was mandated okay. by the state. Well, it's a cut, it's a cut. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think it's just fair to, oh, yeah. to the citizens that we show them that we are, you know, we're not really sticking it to them. It's just a reality they're they got to pay. And, they, and, we got so and the, recy the they're, recycling they're rate is changing. Uh, they're paying taxes and they're paying the. And the Service charge. Well, they're they're paying and they're paying. Right. Um, 
So I, I, I don't, I'm not yeah, fond of the idea of setting the sure. precedent of splitting. I don't see what he's saying, Jason. Just we don't have a split all the time. What's the precedent? Increase the base to about 27 cents. Let, I mean, let the customer yeah. that, that use it pay the full cost of using it. Yeah, full cost of 27 cents increase. Yeah. Right. But it's, it's not the price. Wow. You said the, the, the people that use it, you can't just. You can't just. You can't just. Oh, you everybody. mean everybody. everybody. So, so you need to tell me you're going to raise mine even though I don't use it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 But, but you're paying now. So. Yeah, but you ain't paying that much now. Real, real quick. Real quick. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't get the tax payers a break. We're spending their money anyway to pay it out of the general fund. It's not a tax. Uh, listen, 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 man. You know, a tax by a rose by any other name is a rose. You can call it what you want to call it. It's, 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 it's an increase in the out there pocket. How about that? Whatever you call it. Okay. So let's not go semantics. We're not. No. We're not taxing them. May we move on? Increasing their fee. We're not increasing. Did we decide to split it? Was that the company? No, I don't think we're voting to split it. I think we're still having no, no, a discussion. He, you're talking about oh, splitting. he needs it for yeah, the revenue. Right. For the he needs oh. put it in the budget. Yeah. yeah. I agree with Jason. Just increase twenty seven cents. Wow. So Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> wow. We're gonna have to do it anyway. Question. 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 As the mayor said, we're gonna have to do it why anyway. Next year, year to the year. Why are you against them if, anyway. if they're receiving the service? I just think that we should uh, split the difference. That's all. You know, we should split the difference because they are. What first of all, listen. All right, um, you really want to go there? Let's 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 Okay, okay. How many minutes? Three minutes. I don't need three minutes. I don't need three minutes. I need I need just two seconds to say that when we raised the water bill, all right, 27.9 percent, because we told the citizens that we were getting better water, new water, 12 years ago. We hadn't done it. We we pretty much old, you know. They they paying higher rate. Charles, you know that. Yeah. I thought, okay. I so know let's raise the rate. But okay. So let's just give them. Oh, what's well, what's, what's, what's the difference? Said, we're not raising. Okay. Y'all do what you want to do. The cost is going okay, up. Okay. Fine. I think let's see what you want to do. I think it'd be great. I like your idea of bringing back bulk services. So instead of doing something like that, that would be great. I like your idea of bringing back bulk services. So instead of instead of because this is just going to keep increasing. Prices. Okay. We know that. We know that, Lance. Okay, Everything so increases. So everything increases. So okay. okay. So, because it's going to increase doesn't, well, doesn't so mean that, so okay, we're going to do it like nothing else is going to increase. Life is increased. You pay more for everything. Up for so, everything. so, look at the idea of bringing back bulk pickup for those citizens rather than the business owners. And, you know, move that stuff around the budget. And this is just continues being a pass through service and add a service in it instead of supplementing this service. And then not having a bulk, we're still going to be upset because it's going to raise either way. I have no idea what you're talking it about. Won't, it, won't <laughs> no, raise, really don't. it won't raise as much if you share than it would if you just add the whole 20 something cents. Let, let, me, re let, me, let me rephrase. Yeah. I, right. I think huh? what, where, where he's at and what he's saying is we have no control whatsoever on recycling, solid right. waste, anything. This is a pass-through service that right. we are simply the middleman of a contract. Right, right. And it, it, this is as much advanced disposal in the market with us not really having a part. And I think right. what he's saying is, is because we have no hand or no control whatsoever on what's happening with this, in this particular instance, let's just service a pass-through. Put the 27 cent on them because we it's beyond our control and there's nothing. Okay. Whereas bulk, yeah. however, we are providing the service. It's fully within our control. Let's focus more effort on that and how can we make that happen from a a funding standpoint versus this where we can't control anything. Okay. I, I, I think that that that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a false dichotomy. So, Two separate things: apples and oranges. All I want to say is, is that. Um, you don't have to worry about that. But when um, when Ms. Ethics or something comes to me and says, why did y'all raise my trash? Mm -hmm. You know, whatever percent, whatever percent, why did y'all do that? I don't even use recycling, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell her, 
that I was for splitting that with you, Miss Uncle. You know, I thought that I thought that was a fair thing to do. We can't control it, but we could split it with you. Um, you know, keep passing on and passing on. That's the council's decision. That's just my personal thing is I would fight for my my constituents with uh, 14 cents. I mean, I would give my constituents yeah. 14 cents. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Can we take a vote? No. Well, we're doing so, we're just getting, getting the. Uh, There's a. The the I didn't, I didn't we can get a consensus. Guys, guys, we can, we can kind of go around. It's not a vote, but a consensus. I didn't say that we voted in work session. I didn't say we voted on anything in work session. We don't, but we can kind of get a consensus from people on where they stand. Instead of 27. It's not so much about it, it's just getting a consensus from people where they stand. And it's not a well, I mean, again, I'm There's not, nothing I'm not walking in. I'm just it. warning well, that I, I think you know, I mean, I, 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 you don't get to tell me that I cannot I, speak my opinion. I didn't say you can okay, speak then opinion. let me speak. <laughs> we listen to you. No, I, I listen to you right. speak. Okay, say something intelligent. You understand that. Come on, Mary, go ahead. I'm done. It's okay. I think we should put the 27 cents in the budget. We still can vote on it. But in the work well, session, look, we well, look at vote. this. This if is work we session. Sell this is disgusting. Okay, and then to, to carry it over. 37 and cents. A work session. Only if they, is I don't not think most people are going to even notice that. It don't matter if they notice but that. When we, when we promote it, then they say, oh, no. Well, then, like people. you said, it's more mental. It, it's not more Absolutely. as much pocket in that amount as it is mental. I agree with that. Come on. Okay. And that way, that other ten cents, we can pick up the bulk trash upon a phone call to pick it up. Where? I don't think nobody has agreed to that. No. no we well, but we'll, we'll have to circle back to bulk commerce. Yeah, yeah let's circle back. Some point. Yeah, we, we got to We have to circle back to this. Let's go <laughs> next. We, we need to give Teddy direction right. on how he needs to proceed. With so when did we start board. doing this in work session? He needs to know where to When did we start doing this in doing work session? We give Teddy, we give staff We're just giving him direction. We're not voting. We're not voting. voting. Uh, that was my We're just issues. giving direction yeah, for the right. proposed budget. Well, it's either up or down, right? Well, yeah. it's, hey, it's well, either, well, it's either pass on or split. Yeah. yeah I mean, pass on. Pass on. No, it's Maybe. not, it, it's just, where, where are you at in your head with regards to Look at that man. <laughs> <laughs> I personally think you should split it. Okay. All right, okay. I think you should pass on. So I think you should pass on. Maybe. Oh, you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to pass it on. I'm split. Split. You know what I'm doing. Split. I don't even know what Go into um, yeah, that's the Well, it's 4.30. We're kick it to the next meeting. We're trying to give administration some direction and to propose a budget. That's all we're doing. Like we're not I taking said, a vote. Every, <laughs> every, every work session, we come up with something new. So I mean, not voting because it's not we, being you know, affected. You cannot vote in a in work session. Right. A work right. session right. is to discuss what is to go into the meetings. It is not to be voted on any We've seen we we did a brick wall here, let's move on. Exactly. Let's go. I tell you what. We can't give the administration any direction. Come on, Council. I think you understand the direction. All right, let's move on. All right. Um, well, what is it? I need to understand. It's passing. I mean, it's um, passing it on. That's what five people say, okay. passing it on. Okay, let's All move right. on. There we go. So we didn't vote okay. with the consensus. Okay. Was, are, we, okay. are we done with the general fund yet, or are we still? We're, still oh, we're, 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 we're almost to the final. We really have to argue. How much more time Part about request. And, and once we get past the request, then we'll, we'll, we'll schedule another meeting. Okay. So. All right, all right, fleet, yeah. fleet budget, quick and easy. There was no significant changes this year within the fleet budget. Um, a few minor up and downs of some line items, nothing, nothing of major. Um, $137,070. That's the entire budget. Yeah. 
we're presenting that we're presenting that budget is sound. That's why I accept the same thing. Percentage of fleet budget. Fleet budget is salary. Uh, Pink calculator. Uh, 128,000. All right. So, real real quick, this was uh, general fund non department. All right. Go ahead. General fund non departmental budget. Um, the most significant change in this this year, or a staff recommendation we are putting forward, involves the senior assistance fund. Previously in the past, the senior assistance fund has been within the general fund non-departmental. One of the things that we are, are asking council to consider this year and recommending is rather than the taxpayer funded fund supplementing the water and sewer bills. We're all for senior assistance. We've strengthened the program and everything, but that we shift that 14,400 to the utility fund and let, rather than taxpayer funds supplementing that, let water and sewer customer funds supplement that. Amen. I, I, again, it's a recommendation and an idea we wanted to put out this year. Um, wait a minute, say that again. The, the program's still in place, wait, it's still hold, funded. Hold, 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 slow down, year. slow down. Say that again. So right now, the senior assistance fund helps <laughs> them with their water and sewer bills yeah, for the town. Uh -huh. I got you. It's funded out of the general fund, not the utility fund, water Wait. and sewer fund. Hold exactly. on, you're talking about the, the senior assistance? Right. right. Yeah. I thought the it came out of the fee for, uh, for S and G, no? Yeah, that, but, mm -hmm. but that okay. was right never now. locked in. It, that was that was discussed previously, okay, finish, but it finish, was never finish, solidified finish, with an order. Finish saying but this we, for that's me. what we normally Hold do. Hold up, Steve. Okay. Finish saying okay. this for me. You say what now? Do it again. The Senior Assistance Fund, mm -hmm. which assists qualifying people with their water and sewer bills. I got that part of it. Go to the next part. Has always been funded from the general fund. Exactly. What we have recommended doing is moving that to the utility fund. Enterprise. The enterprise yeah. fund. Okay. So that custom, water and sewer customers bills are, are assisting with other people's water and sewer bills versus taxpayer money assisting with water and sewer bills. Okay, so will it affect money. that? Well, no, customer water, not will service it, money. Will it, will it affect that? Will it affect that? The, the, the amount will be the same. The program will be the same. It's just coming out of one bucket instead of it. It's going out of water and sewer. It's moving the utility fund as an expense out of the utility fund versus the general fund. Okay. The program's the same, it's still the same amount of what money. You gonna do with the, what you going to do with the SCNG funds? I thought that's how it funded. That was, when the program was put into place, that was kind of, that was what it was attached to. Right. Even though it was never that's formally. How it was funded. It was funded by that. But it was never it formally. Was formally it, was for, it was formally done through, um, through the budget, which is an ordinance. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but I don't yeah. think. But, but don't this is a different really budget, a different ordinance. I don't so know. I don't this know is a different budget, a different budget order. Well, yeah, you can change it by, right. by right. ordinance. You can change what we're saying is, is yeah. we, we recommended and are asking y'all to consider why, moving why it. Why did y'all want to do that? I'm just curious. It, to me, it's about taxpayer monies. All of it is taxpayer money. No, water and sewer services paid for is by not what? the same as taxpayer money. Why? Whose money is it? One, yeah, you're paying for service, service huh? to. But it's still for the tax. For how money. much? Well, they may be taxpayers, but it's not tax. They are not paying tax bills. Okay, all right, it, it, it's coming from the same customer. Right. I, I yeah. don't disagree with Who you. Who are taxpayers? That. But go ahead. So, and, and actually, you have people that are paying water and sewer bills outside the town that that aren't taxpayers. That yeah, could be assisting with with this. <laughs> but go ahead. They're taxpayers for the county, not okay. the town. Okay. Cool. Right. So, anyways, um, so that's the main focus. Uh, that was, the, that, was, that was the main focus. So everybody, yeah. to change one, yeah. everybody you, even the Lake Murray system, people will be contributing towards this versus it being just on the back of our tax payers. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I like that. Are y'all fine with that? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. when we get the utility budget, you're going to see it in the non-departmental added in there, All right. All right. which I, appears to be another nice yeah. conversation. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're getting ready to review the uh, requests by departments and staff. Um, 
I will go ahead and throw it out there. One of the things you will see is a 2% across the board cost of living increase for staff. That is one of our highest priorities that we would like to see funded this year, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. CPI last year. CPI. Last year, uh, 3.21. Uh, about that, right off the top of you. Uh, 3.21. Oh, what what the state's using is 2.44. For for tax increase, so 2.44 is what's been given to us for tax increase. Um, one thing to keep in mind as we look at this list is, if y'all will recall, the ones that have been around here, uh, Stephen Charles, um, sent. In 2015, we did a five-year lease purchase for $305,000 worth of capital. Right. We've got this year's payment in the budget we're working on now, and then next year we'll have that payment. But we can start a new lease purchase next year when we're doing budget prep because you don't make your first payment for a year after you start the new lease purchase. So next year we will be able to put a new lease purchase in place next year. Uh, so keep that in mind as we're looking at some of these budget requests um, that we do get to start a new lease purchase next year. I'm going to skip past that slide because I don't want to run you off too quick before there's an understanding of why that slide's on there. I am going to flip at this point over to the list. So the 2% cost of living um, recommendation that we have going back down to the bottom here, if you will recall, we have available for the general fund at this point $54,856. You see, Ted, that, that's always an arbitrary number. That's how they got us last time before. You remember? And then when something came up, they had all the other money. Who came up with that number? That's based on adding in the revenue, projected revenues, and projected expenses okay. as, right. as is in the budget. Yeah. The, uh, we to that. We, 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 we got that the last time we were talking about that. So you but go ahead. You're showing a negative now. July 1. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, that oh, was there. Right. We, can, we can get this one from there. Hang on. Because we got it from this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know how that game goes. Yeah. Turn the page. Turn the page. Yeah. It takes almost all of us. Look, I'm not supposed to, but I mean, I mean that's a very interesting thing to talk about. Don't want to talk about it. 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 So I move that we adjourn the meeting. Well, if we can take a five minute break for me to review this and evaluate. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second vote. But they they just. There's a motion and a second to adjourn. Okay, then that's fine because I would really like to evaluate what he just brought up anyway. So. Call the roll. He said he only needs five minutes. Call the roll. He asked for five minutes to go over something that Seth had, and you all went on and adjourned. No, yes, we, we were going to adjourn the meeting. I know, but this he asked for five minutes to go over something. Okay, okay. okay. All right. so we're and it may be something so that. I've got a motion and a second. It could be important. I'll okay. withdraw one second. Withdraw. 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 Now please go ahead. Okay. If, 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 if I may, based on what I see, it may be back to the drawing board on some of this anyway, so I may be asking y'all to adjourn for tonight. <laughs> Anyways, until I can put this into place. Go ahead, Ted. So okay, you got five ahead. minutes. I'd like to look Go at ahead. this and Go if ahead. I think we need to adjourn for us to further evaluate, we'll take five. No, I made the motion and I withdrew it and Olin seconded and I withdrew it. So I made the motion to oh, no. we are in temporary recess. Right. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. Okay. So the Charles. 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 Charles.
that's and that's why for a five minute break. Um, Sprouts. I never saw you Sprouts. Sprouts. <laughs> JP, listen. Yo. That's why the mayor instead of the mayor taking the vote, the clerk should call the vote. So she always knows a uh, second. And that's true. Yeah, the clerk needs to call the roll. When we have a vote, the clerk needs to call the roll. That way she always knows who's who's the one. That's how they do it. The most professional setting. Well, just look, look it up. If you want, Steve, look up that order, our order on, um, on our meeting. Just that. Is that the way we're supposed to do it for our meetings? Is that order? I don't think it's specified. Because it's fine. Because um, because our ordinance says that we use Robert E. Because I was there. It's specified in there. It's specified in here. It's all good. Okay. We're fine. Not necessarily. Uh, okay. He had me about to panic my butt off. We're good. All good. I'm glad we're not going to the Okay, Seth, so what happened? Can we all hear what's going on? They're talking about business license. Yeah, we're talking about where it's standing out. No, I mean, can we all get to what you got to say so we can go yeah. home? I don't no, I don't have anything to say. We just cleared up. Answered the question. He about made me freak out. But y'all mean business license? You got my heart racing. Real property in the same breath. We tried to when we saw Dave's town. All the people that had two or more rental units have a business license. Imagine where that would go. Well, they do now. Is it two or more? All of them. One. All of them. One? If you yeah. have rental property have now, you have to have You have to have a business license. We're trying to give, we, we try really? to screw our Again, it, it all goes back to the, the business license. So if I have, so if you have a rental, you have to have a business license. Yes. This is crazy. Really? Mm -hmm. It's insane. So well, that's how money not The act of soliciting to make money alone constitutes a business loss. Yeah, yeah. Whether you make a dollar or not, the act of soliciting business. Yeah. So people that go and knock on doors trying to trying to make money, they are required. So how people supposed to know? The, 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 the code enforcement officer will let you know. Trust I, I mean, I mean, yeah, we're coming back. We shouldn't do that to people. <laughs> we ain't never done that before. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait for you. She goes to the I think he's at. How? Did he go, Charles, did he go to the restroom or is he outside? Is he right there? Oh, we're doing this. We're going to get back so we can to adjourn. But we want everybody no, to have something. No, we, Seth had something to say, and then y'all can adjourn. Oh, did you go home? There was a, I'm ready to go back. We're waiting for a couple of people. Oh, Cynthia had to step out for that. I got you. There's Charles. Charles is here. Yep. I mean, it's, Mr. Mayor, I'll say this. It's up to y'all if you want to continue on with this list tonight or if you want to. I'd like to get out of here for now. Oh, okay. I got that one. I would at least like to run through this list so that when people, we, we can have some questions. Okay. How long is it going to take? All right. It ain't going to take. Yeah, bring it back in session. Let's go. All right, we're back. We're back. Let's go. Teddy. All right, Ted, let's go. That ain't the way you do it, but anyway, let's go. They just okay. doing anything tonight. So, <laughs> From 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 a staff recommendation standpoint, um, we do recommend a two percent. Um, since 2014, um, every year staff has received um, a cost of living. This past year was the first year in the current budget we're in that there was not a cost of living increase for staff, and we feel strongly that we we need to get this two percent cost of living put into the budget. 
it is forty two thousand five hundred that does include fica retirement and workers comp increases that will come along with the salary increases to do the two percent and this is for all of that's for all of general fund all general fund staff. Okay. when we get to utility it's seventeen thousand for utility staff okay. for two percent across the board um, how much money did you total say we had we had unaccounted for 54, 856. Because it's 435,000, it's probably about 10,000. That's really not a real number. <laughs> yeah. You said 475 with general fund and enterprise? No. That's just general fund. Enterprise and you could, you could deduct, and that would deduct off of the 54 that we have, that's reflecting as available. That's not a real number, but y'all can play that game. We don't mention that before. But well, go ahead. Every year. Every well, year we I, I'm trying same. to understand. Every year. That oh, number that's uh, left okay. is based on revenues that have been okay, projected Charles. and All expenses. Right, I'm not even going. Charles, can you share that with us? Yeah. What, no. do you, what do we need to know? Like, um, go down to the bottom. Okay. Let's see, we're showing a deficit. No. No, we're showing a surplus. I mean, uh, no, no. Oh, that that red is not a surplus. No. Oh, the red is the total. So if we funded on, everything. Here's the here's the budget summary for the general fund. Right now, revenues that have been put in are at four million one hundred forty nine thousand nine hundred twenty six dollars. Here's each of the the budgets with the projected expenses built into them based on our discussion tonight. The total expenses, that means there's fifty four thousand eight hundred and fifty six right now that has not been put into the budget that's available for items on this list. No, Sur that's no. a surplus. Well, it's, not, it's not a surplus because it hasn't been signed yet. But we just had that it money had not spent. been put into the budget. Right. right. It's, it's sitting is. there to discuss the list of other requests and which ones we want to fund to put in. If it's not in the budget, isn't that a deficit to the budget? No, uh, I've, just, I've, I've, left, I've left the money available for us to discuss the additional requests mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. cost of living. So well, you're saying we have 54 eight available for, for the general fund to, to go ahead no no right. once that what once you give people a two percent raise cost of living that comes out to fifty nine thousand five hundred dollars what <laughs> no, all right so here's what i'm gonna do here's what i'm gonna do real quick i'm gonna go to the non-departmental budget in the I'm, I'm in the merit the pool in the merit cost of living pool and i'm gonna put that forty two thousand five hundred in I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to go back to the budget summary for the general fund. That's what would still be remaining if we do the 2% cost of living. 4000 or 12000 12356 Well, I thought you just said that uh, 17000 went to the public works. That's utility. That comes out of the utility fund. That, that's, this is just general fund you're looking at here. Oh, so, so we look at 12000 Share it with everybody. Wait, are you saying I'm not accounting for the four hundred and something thousand that comes in in June? I didn't say that, but no, I am. Okay. If you look at the if you look at the business under revenue and you look at projected business license, what I've done is looked at how much we've received in the month of June over the past five years, and I've That's I've not what I was saying, but you can... Well, no, no, no. I've you explained something that I didn't say. 893000 I'm, I'm sticking around the same amount we had budgeted for last year in business license, but that, if that's not what that's you're not referencing... My, that's not what okay. I was referencing, so... Okay. All right, I move that we adjourn so we can come back at this and flesh out. Motion? Second, baby. Second. Susan. All favor? Yes. All opposed? <laughs> <laughs> we enter. Oh, we come to the